Now, in the age of the Premier League, we're used to the world's best footballing managers being brought in from other countries. But just after the Second World War, it was the other way round, when a man from Barnsley took a small footballing nation to the World Cup final. Late kickoffs, Guy Mowbray has the story. In June 1958, he guided Sweden to the World Cup final here in Stockholm. Later that same year, the only job that would come up for him in England was here at Skegness Town. He'd already led Sweden to the semis of the 1950 World Cup when England were knocked out in the first round. He had a better international record than Sir Alf Ramsey, but was never considered for the England job. George Rayner is arguably our most successful ever international manager. As well as his World Cup achievements, he won the Olympics with Sweden and played a part in the Swedes beating England at Wembley. So why was he so admired here and yet so overlooked in his own country? This is the Rasunda Stadium, scene of one of George Rayner's greatest achievements. I've come to meet two players from Rayner's squad that reached the 1958 World Cup final. I, I was 19. If Feng says they still call you the youngster. The younger. <laughs> <laughs> Throughout the tournament, Rayner Sweden played with discipline and flair, with star players like Kurt Hamrun and Naka Skogland. But in the final, they met one of the best international teams ever assembled, featuring a 17-year-old called Pele. Nils Liedholm gave Sweden a surprise early lead, but it didn't last long. Did you think you could beat Brazil? No, I don't think so. No, I had uh, not that uh, feeling. They were a stronger, stronger team. Pele then was, what, only 17 years old, but you could tell he was a star? Yes, already from the beginning. Orlando, Orlando, Pele, out to the Gallo into Pele, and he scored in the very last minute. Sweden had fallen short, but their coach from Barnsley had allowed the flag to be flown with pride. And Ova, you lived with George for a while. What sort of man was he? He was a fantastic man. I, I really uh, like him. A nice man, not, not, no. not, not hard with the no, players? No, 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 no. Not at all. He was carefully listened to whenever he said something. People and then the players, as far as I know, they, they learned to listen to him because he was, he was clever in analyzing the, the, team, the, the, the team. In 1958, Lennart Johansson's career as a football politician was just beginning. He was impressed with George Rayner. Does it surprise you that people in Sweden still remember George Rayner and admire him, but in England, Nobody really knows who he was. No, but you know, England doesn't belong to Europe. They belong to this Great Britain. I've learned from them. <laughs> so I'm not surprised. But that the Swedes remember him, if you have a gold medal in London in 48, and, and then we had the bronze in, in Brazil and then in Helsinki was in the Olympic Games. And after that, we, we were number two in the World Championship in, in Stockholm, 58. Mm then you must understand a country with eight, nine million people that we are quite proud of the performance. George Rayner recorded his own thoughts in this book that he wrote shortly after the 1958 World Cup final. It's almost as much about England's failure in the competition as it is about Sweden's success. In fact, it almost reads like an application for the England job. But when George Rayner returned to England, there was no job waiting for him with the national team. In fact, he failed to get work with any football league club and ended up with non-league Skegness Town. Looking at that tannoy, I bet that didn't work. No. <laughs> Look at that, I bet that was there when you were playing. Look at it. it must have been, yeah. <laughs> Love it. Yeah, yeah. Brian Asher was a full-time builder and part-time winger when one of the world's top managers took charge of his team. He brought uh, team spirit into the club. I mean, uh, he, he had a dossier on everybody, and uh, he told, he, he was, you knew when you went out to play what you'd got to do. His organisation was first class. 
He, he left nothing to chance, and he would have been a good manager today, no doubt about that. In his book, George wrote, any coach has an ambition to be a success in his own country. Well, George would never fulfil his ambition. Skegness Town couldn't afford to keep him, and his last job was an unsuccessful stint at Doncaster Rovers. He retired to Buxton, where he died in 1985. But that's not the end of the George Rayner story. Out across the North Sea from Skegness is the place where his family would make their home, Sweden. You see how big he was. Mm. When I was a kid, I didn't really realise that. No, was... you, you don't when it's so no, close, no, do you? No. George's son Brian had stayed in Sweden, married and had two sons yeah. of his own. Christopher and Peter live in Lund. He yeah. lived and he breathed football. Yeah. I mean, he couldn't sit down at a dinner table like this without starting to think about, you know, this game over here, and me. The goalie was over here. Yeah. Over dinner, I find out more about George's passion and frustration. Why did it not happen in England? Why, you know, I mean, Doncaster Rovers are big enough as far as we're concerned, but you know. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't Liverpool, was no. it? No, it wasn't Arsenal. No, no. why not? I mean, why did he not have the, the standing in England that he did have in Sweden? I... The impression I got was that he really didn't get on very well with the big shots within the. The men in suits. The men in suits. Because I mean, his book was was published, yeah. but then withdrawn from the market. Hmm. And that was because some people in the FA took offence. Hmm. That's the way I heard the story. So in the end, the book that catalogued George Rayner's incredible success story was one of the reasons behind him never being a success at home. He told English football straight what he thought of it, and English football turned him away. The miner's son from Barnsley, who almost brought Sweden onto a par with Brazil, was never given the chance to show what he could do with England. Well, our loss was Sweden's gain, and here at least he has a legacy. It's the place where his family lives, and his footballing achievements live on.